Welcome to episode four of Building House Start to Finish, sponsored by Skillshare. This week we battled weather, dogs, and even our own children to keep this project moving. And this is Friday filming here, going down the road. It started pouring rain just before I get to the job, so I made a U-turn headed to Jason's house, which is near the job. We decided to be productive and get some book work done, figure some materials, and that was great for about five minutes, and then it all fell apart. Dude, what is with this dog? It doesn't want to go outside. Get a puppy, they said. It'll be great, they say. <laughs> Whatever. He's not going to kill you. He's not going to do that. You're a good dog. Dude. <laughs> Give him trouble with your kids there, bro. I'd love to go to work. <laughs> Can we go to the job site instead? And the moral of the story is, Jason is a great housewife, and actually, no, seriously, he's a great dad, and I needed to get him out of the house and do some manual labor. I had the perfect job. Back at the job, we had to compact the gravel. Gravel, when it comes out of the dump truck, is near 98% compacted. That's not 100%. We used this manual tamper to get it compacted to the full compaction we needed. This is what it looks like in regular speed. Sucky. You're going so slow. <gasps> on larger jobs, we would use a motorized compactor like a Whacker Packer to do this faster and easier. But on this job, it's so small, it wasn't worth even going to rent the thing and return it. We would each go about 20 seconds and that's all you could take with your shoulders and then switch off. All right, so I've been doing construction with my dad a long time before. Did any myself. We used to do this thing called walking it in. It was more like jogging. We didn't even have one of those things. So what we would do is run across the whole foundation like this. And that does about the same thing, but it's actually even more tiring. But we would tamp in the gravel like this all day long. Let me say this, I wouldn't recommend jogging your gravel in like that. But we did a lot of crazy things like actually digging footings by hand. We did that a lot. My dad was like, let's not rent any machinery. It's a good workout. So we did a lot of crazy stuff that was a good workout. Definitely one way to do it. <laughs> Next in preparation for the slab, we laid out our six mil vapor barrier. Six mil means six one thousandths of an inch, not six millimeters. That would be way thicker. And we had to get this overlapping by a couple feet before laying the steel on it. The steel is to reinforce the concrete slab. I do want to point out that we don't have any thickened areas in this slab for load bearing points because of the trusses that are going to span wall to wall on this structure. In many cases, we have to do specialized load bearing points. All right, let's take a quick break to thank our sponsor for today's video, Skillshare. And if you don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community where millions of people come together to take the next steps in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of classes for entrepreneurs and lifelong learners like me, ranging anywhere from art to music to marketing and graphic design. So right now I'm learning how to use my iPhone to take professional looking photos with Dale McManus. I thought I knew everything there was to know about using an iPhone for videography and photography, but now I've learned so much more and keep a lookout for better thumbnails coming on my YouTube channel because of this. I want to mention that Skillshare is curated with learning in mind, so there are no ads, and they are also always launching new creative classes. Also, Skillshare is extremely affordable, less than $10 a month with an annual membership. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers that click the link in the description will get a free two-month trial of premium subscription so you can explore your own creativity. And once again, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and helping us bring you better content. All right, back to the action here, cutting steel and putting it in for the slab on this foundation. We tied all of this steel on a two-foot grid with these little ties and our whirly gigs, as I like to call them, so that it'd be nice and uniform. So if you can't tell, it's really hot today, and that's one of the things you'll have to deal with if you're gonna get into construction and doing the actual work yourself is just being really hot when it's hot and being really cold when it's cold. So a lot of people think they wanna do construction till the first time they get really hot, <laughs> and uh, then that's it. So, word of the wise. 
Once we had all the steel in and tied, we elevated the steel with these rebar chairs so that it will be in the top third of the slab and it will give it more strength that way. If it was tied against the plastic, it actually wouldn't do that much. In many cases, we use fiber reinforced concrete instead of steel, but in this case, since we're going to do acid staining as the finished floor, we don't want those fibers in the concrete. They may make the acid staining look bad. Here's a quick look at this vapor barrier already working. You can see it trapping the moisture underneath the gravel. And also one step you need to do that's not in this video is a termite treatment. I try not to be around for that stuff. It'd be great if we had a shovel except for my 11 year old took it out of my truck last night to make a bike trail and didn't put it back. You know what they say, this is one way to do it. All right, guys, I'm back in the office and I want to talk about some other things that I've been working hard on right along the same timeline to make sure that the rest of the house proceeds as planned with no snags. One of those things is ordering the windows. I always order the windows during the foundation phase of the house because they'll take three to four weeks if we're lucky to get them once they're ordered. So we looked at two lines of windows. We've got Anderson windows, which are the Fibrex series. It's actually like extruded Trex decking, I think. Uh, and they're black. So that's what we really wanted because it's a modern look. You got the black frames on the windows. They came out to $8,400 plus tax, which was a little more than our other quote from Jeldwin. And these Jeldwin windows are just vinyl. You can get them in white, gray, or tan. Uh, we really wanted the black, but the Jeldwin were less expensive. They came in at $6,300. So that's a pretty big price difference, but the homeowner did decide to go with the Anderson windows, the black Fibrex 100 series, and we've used these on a lot of houses and actually like them. So I'm glad we're doing that. Some tips if you're gonna order windows for yourself, do not forget about windows that need tempered glass or windows that need to be egress windows in bedrooms. Tempered glass is required two feet to the side of any doors, also in wet areas. Also, if the window is below 18 inches off of the floor, just a few of the places. And egress windows. Your bedroom, if it doesn't have a door to the outside, has to have an egress window as a way for you to get out or a way for a firefighter to get in. Around here, it's five square feet minimum opening on a ground level floor, 5.7 square feet on an upper level, and that's the code. So I'm gonna flash up a picture of the house and label just on one side of the house we're showing here which ones are egress and which ones are tempered. It's such a huge thing. I've made the mistake tons of times of not getting the tempered or egress windows where they need to be the first time and having to swap windows out later. You don't want to have to do that. Okay, the second thing I want to mention that I've been doing in the background here, and if you're building your own project, you also need to think ahead on this, is ordering the trusses. This house, like I mentioned earlier in the video, has free span trusses that go wall to wall. There's no load bearing points out in the middle, which is great. It gives you a place to run your pipes, your HVAC, and also you don't have to have load bearing walls in the middle of your house. So that's also great, but getting in line at a trust plant in a busy time in the economy can be trouble. I would allow at least two to three weeks, maybe even more to get in line to get your trusses manufactured. And sometimes you have to get them engineered and there's a little lag time in that as well. So I just got off the phone with our trust man and we are getting our floor trusses for the second floor next Wednesday. And then next Friday, we will get the roof trusses so that once we start framing, it goes from framing to dry very quickly. You don't have lumber sitting out in the rain and getting potentially ruined. All right, and I do wanna mention that in our next video after we have the slab poured, which should be episode five, I'm gonna do a little cost breakdown of what we've spent so far on materials for this thousand square foot house for the foundation of it. And that should give you a great idea if you're looking to do something similar, what you would expect to spend on materials if you're say in the Southeast United States. Uh, it may be wildly different in other areas, but I think it'll be fun to do, so I'm gonna do it. And with the rain and weather that wraps up another week, we did go out for a little treat on Friday afternoon. We'll show you that. Let's roll it. What time is it, guys? Uh, beer 30. There ain't no such thing as beer 30. <laughs> <laughs> The guys that run the shop down here are awesome. Without us even asking, they had already looked into getting a one-handed braking system for Jamie's mountain bike so he could ride his bike with his kids. Yeah, too, so but the leverage isn't going to be what it should be. What's that? My dad gave me a bike.
that I use. Anyway, I go down the road and he goes, wop, 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 wop. I said, Dad, what's the deal? He said, oh yeah, that tire's real bad. Thanks for watching our video today. Make sure to stay tuned for the rest of our series. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell so you'll get our future videos about construction stuff.